to the tenders. Um, and because the, the reason for that, it's, um, it's, it's, it reflects on, on the business itself, how it operates. So I, I summarized it to be successful in, in any tender that you need three things that you really need to focus on on the business is to understand your business. What do you want to know? What, what do you want to know about your business? What your business is all about? You need to focus on, on that uh, so you can reflect that on your documentations and application. <clears throat> I've met some businesses, they really have many values to their business and they don't know where to focus on. And when they try to apply for a tender, they want to show everything on the document and on the application. But sometimes it, it, that's not the case. It, that what, the, what the client wants to see is what they ask for exactly. So if you are uh, a clean business and you work in uh, uh, for shopping centers and at the same time you do another job as a, as a virtual assistant for another company, um, doing all of that in one application is not going to assist in your application for the tender that you are applying for. So you're applying for a, a tender related to a specific business, uh, related to a specific um, job that they ask you to do, and that's what you want to respond to. So understand your business, understand what you want from your business as to grow, and that will reflect on your, uh, in your application. The second thing is uh, you need to target and plan for your success. Don't just uh, randomly apply for tenders because it's not gonna assist you at all. You're gonna just uh, waste your time applying for tenders that are not related to you or very big for your business as a business, <clears throat> especially for startup business. You can apply for a tender re related to your plan as a business plan, not just uh, randomly. Um, that will help you and reflect as well on your business plan as well and reflect on the client that they will understand that you have target limits and you are targeting specific um, um, jobs to do and targeting specific work to do as, as a business. The third thing that I'll, I'll, I'll always see as well, the time management. And some businesses, they would like to apply for a tender today and, and they just saw it today. It, it's not gonna work that way. Uh, you need to understand when you want to apply for your tender you need to understand how long is the contract it's going to be. You need to understand, you need to time it and you need to target specific, you can target a specific um, uh, time frame of your contract that you want to work with. So obviously that will manage your resources as well, because if you're just applying randomly, you can't manage your resources. You're just going to get lots of contracts and you can't deliver any of them. So let's go in details. As I mentioned, the, the business, understanding your business, you have to know your business purpose. And that 100% reflects on your business. Most, what I tell most of my clients is don't send me a document about your business. Tell me, I have a face to face meeting with them. Tell me what's your business. Because 100% that reflects on, on me on writing the, the, the document that I'm gonna send it to the to, for the tender. The passion that each one has as a business owner about what they do in, your, in their business, that reflects 500 times on, on the document itself. It reflects how the business is active, how they, are, they have passion to do more work, or a business very boring and they're, not, they're just sending a document with lots of colors and that's it and heaps of wording and that's, that's all. So that 100% reflects on the document. Try to uh, be motivated about what you do. Uh, show how, how you've been successful on some, some areas and you have been working with different clients and how it was successful. Um, understand the stage of your business. Your, your business is still as a startup that you have to understand you're still starting up. You can get 5 million worth of project in one, one tender. You're just starting your project. You can get it, but it's not on, on your first day or your first week or your first month. You need to gradually grow as a business to target this 5 million. It, it has to be in your business plan. You need to build that business plan to be able to, to structure your business. 
you must have a business structure, obviously. You can't just uh, apply for a tender without knowing uh, what's, what's next for your business or how you can structure your business. Are you going to have three, four more employees next year or one, 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 one employee going to continue for the next five years? The, the most important part as well, understand the feedback from other people about your business plan. So uh, what Jason, usually I, I communicate with when, when, uh, when I, I struggle sometimes uh, stuff, I ask him, is that, is that work gonna work? Like I had a question to him this morning and our meeting networks as well in the morning that shows we ask questions and, and, and collaborate with each other, understanding how we can have this feedback about uh, our questions. Um, so the time frame, usually you have to target your, your tenders. The tenders are always there and the grants are always there. They, they, some grants are timed, so they know when they're going to open them. Some, some of them, they run for nine, for eight years, for nine years. So you need to target when you want to apply for it. You need to understand when uh, they're going to open. Um, and it's easy to manage that with some consultancies, um, you know, they can, they can help you with that. Um, you, your, your business plan should target those tenders and time it based on that, that will help you to grow as a business. As I said, don't just apply for tender when it opens straight away, because that's not, it's, it could be not related to your business. And I have met clients, they send me uh, uh, tenders, they wanted to apply for uh, some tenders and it wasn't really related to them. It, they just wanted to apply for it and it's not gonna help them to grow as a business. So usually have a schedule, have a plan of how you're gonna apply for any tender, put your time frame when, when you're planning to grow, when you can get the, the, the 20 grand, when you can get the 5 million, when you can get the 20 million, time it for the whole year. And that will help you to grow as a business. Uh, the, the time management that you, you you, you, you should focus on, it's not just about your time as a business, but also, as I said, to help your resources as well. Uh, most of the tenders that they, that they will ask you, especially the larger tenders, they will ask you if you, you will be able to deliver the tender or not. So they want to know how many employees they're gonna be working on this, on this, on this project. So if you have 20 tenders you're applying for, and you have three employees, how are you gonna, how are you gonna deliver the projects for them? And believe it or not, <clears throat> that's one of the important parts that most of, not just the government, but any tender they focus on. If you don't have enough resources to deliver the, the tender, the, you will definitely, you will not be able to, to, to be successful on it. So manage it from resources perspective and time frame, who's gonna be working on, on what day, which time, which month, which, uh, that, that will help you as well as a business to grow and also will reflect on, on your business as someone that knows how to plan, how to manage your business. Um, you can get, you know, you can get a, a, a time frame, you can manage it the way you, you want to manage it <clears throat> and that will help you reflect on your business. Um, get your concept right of your business, okay? Don't as a, oops, something wrong happened. Okay. Um, so as I said, get, get your concept of your business correctly. Understand the skills of your business, what you exactly do, and your skills, and your resources and skills, and how you, how, how much is gonna, you're gonna gain from this tender. Because if, if for example, a tender for 20,000, and you have one, what you have three resources, are you gonna be able to pay them from the tender for the 20,000 for the whole year, for example, and the tender will run for one year? Are you gonna be able to support your, your, your employees with this 20,000 if they're gonna be working just in one project or they're gonna be working on multiple projects and you're gonna be able to pay them from, from, this, from, from the income that you're gonna get from the tender? So it's, uh, you need to understand the economics behind the, the tender. You need to understand how much it's going to cost you to even, um, you know, manage the tender, 
you, how you're gonna uh, get your resources in place, how you how how you're gonna pay them, how you're gonna pay, how you're gonna deliver it, how much you're gonna spend to deliver the, the, the project itself. So all of that you need to estimate it properly, so you can be able to figure out how how you, how you're gonna be successful on this tender. This is the whole economic uh, um, formula behind it: resources. Your skills, your skills, your your resources, skills as well that that adds on, and your um, your estimate cost of the project that you're applying for. Because believe it or not, that will appear on the tender. You can be the, the cheapest because you will lose as well. If you are the cheapest in your tender, they will figure it out. There is a huge gap between you and other tenders, and that will will. will keep they'll keep sending you inquiries why it's why it's why it's less unless you've actually missed an item that they asked for or you don't have the resources to get the tender get deliver the project so they'll keep sending you emails inquiries about your tender and uh, why it's less and they're probably going to have meetings with you and review it in detail so better to do it from the beginning correctly understand um, the concept of the tender write it properly and send it through to them. Now that, that, that was the tender part. The grant, it's, it's, it's not too far from, from, uh, from the tender part. However, it's more like a marathon, I would say. It's more of about um, how, to, how to be tough enough to deliver the grant because grants are not free money. <laughs> Most of the people they think, oh, okay, I can get a grant, and and uh, I can because I'm a startup business, so I can get a grant and I can deliver uh, X Y Z. It's not a free money. They will ask you to prove how much it's going to cost you. They'll ask you how you can deliver it, how many people is going to be working on it. So it's it's a uh, it has lots of mental toughness. You need to be very tough to 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 be able to get the get your 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 business together to be able to apply for a, for a grant it runs for a really long period sometimes sometimes it runs for eight eight years as a as a grant and you have to report on it um, don't expect to get the grant straight away some people apply for grants multiple times and they don't get it from the first time because xyz they're not ready to get it uh because their their business are not reflecting the right information that the the the, the person that they they applying for the grant they're not re really writing it properly they're not providing the information enough for um for um uh, for applying for it so don't predict uh that i'm gonna get it definitely it's not something easy money they say it's easy money it's not an easy money it's something you have to work for and uh, you need to the fueling i would say i call it fueling because you're actually feeding the, the client of what you do you can't just <clears throat> get the grant and run away you have to report on it and you have to manage it and reporting is the, the hardest part i think for most of the most of my clients they find it's very hard and they they usually come to report on on their grants something wrong happened again so from the grants perspective, I, I have five items that you need to you need to understand to be successful in any grant. Understand your organizations, whether it's a not-for-profit or whether it's a business. Uh, understand the needs of it. Do you really need that grant or it's just a free money? Because that reflects on your application. They will figure it out straight away if you are saying you want to get the grant because you are just growing business or if you are actually trying to have a project you're building a project step by step you need to have a strategy and you need to understand the strategy you need to understand your organization organization strategy if you are get, getting xy grant from this organization you need to have a backup um, another grant that you need to apply for because at least one of them could win the other one can't win so you need to have a backup plan of which one you can get relationship and network this is the biggest part as well um 
usually to 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 apply for any grant it's very hard sometimes it's hard overwhelming to find it itself that grant related to what you do um, and even if you find something that related to what you do sometimes it's focused on specific businesses and and that in a specific area or a specific state so you can't really apply for it straight away so networking and relationship building of um, people that they have applied for similar grant in the past and they got it that's something also you can consider to be able to to, to be able to understand how long it took them to get the grant or um, if they were successful uh, how did they deliver it did they deliver it properly or not um, you can some businesses they get the grant straight away but they don't, never get a, a, a same grant from the same organization after that because they don't report on it properly or they just get the grant and they stop providing the service that they they say they, don't, they can provide on it so you need to have that kind of feedback from others as well the biggest part is to understand how you sell your project or you sell your purpose i would say if you are a not-for-profit organization and you help, for example, uh, 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 homelessness, you're focused on homelessness. If you don't sell your, your information, your data, how did you come up with the figures of the homelessness? If you don't sell that to the client or to the founder, they won't be able to accept it because they will think you're just getting the money without having a full background of your purpose, of your organization. So you need to have that understanding of you, you need to have the, the proper data to understand what you what what's your purpose is, what your organizations are feeding and helping. You need to understand uh, how to reduce the risk from your resources. So basically, especially for grants, you need to understand how your grants are gonna, gonna be delivered. If it's gonna be delivered for one year, you need to understand how how you're gonna deliver the project with, with the limited resources you have or the the amount of resources you have with this amount of years uh, for for this one year so if you're gonna have uh, three people focused on one project and you know they're gonna stay for one year then you are right you are you can prove that that you're you gonna get you're gonna get the grant successfully but if you gonna um, uh, get volunteers for one year so you're not 100 percent sure of whether they're gonna continue with you working with you for one year or not whether they, uh, if you have a backup, if um, uh, people that they're going to be working on, if you have twenty employees, uh, twenty uh, um, uh, uh, volunteers working on the project, then they can trust that at least if ten of them gone, then you're going to have a backup of ten that can deliver the, the grant for you. So those kind of risks you need to reduce from resources specifically, because uh, I see lots of um, organisations they they don't plan their resources properly, and that's a huge risk to reflect on, on your grant application. Um, as I said, understand your own organization's need, employment, resources, innovation. How do you uh, innovate your, um, how, how, how your idea is actually uh, a new idea? Because most of the uh, uh, foundations, they won't give you a grant without giving a new idea. Hundreds of other organizations, they can help in homelessness, but what's your new idea that you are actually providing to help homelessness, for example. And the sustainability uh, of the organizations, you can't just be one off project and just run away as an organization. Some, some people, they take it emotionally, they start a not-for-profit organization for one, one year because they've seen someone homeless in, in somewhere and they just take it emotionally and they start a not-for-profit organization based on that. And they just keep going for one year or even less and they, they ask for grants for projects to deliver and they just realize that that's not something they can do so you need to be uh, stable in your organization and you need to prove that as an organization so you can be able to deliver projects so they can give you the money uh, to deliver uh, make sure the other thing is to to have a marketing strategy of your organization you need, without marketing strategy you can't really get anything out of it because if you you know how to market your organizations outside your um uh to the to the public and they can notice your organization then you can actually 
put it in paper and get more grants. Um, or as I said, you have to have strategic uh, deliverables, how, to can, how you can deliver the, the, the grant. You need to have uh, goals. You need to measure your goals. How are you going with your goals? Um, you need to have a proper, clear business plan. That's whether it's not for profit organization, whether it's proper business, that actually a uh, profitable business. Uh, the strategically understanding of your organization, that's a big part. You need to have a clear vision and how you're going to get your funding, how you, you can't get just one source of funding. You have to be out there getting more funding, not just depending on one grant. You need to get more funding to be able to, to, to proceed as a business, you, to grow as a business. And you need to demonstrate the expertise and the experiences that you have in the past that you have delivered previous projects, even if it could be your personal experiences. Um, I know some um, uh, organizations that they, uh, not-for-profit organizations, that they have uh, accountants in, in, as a, in the board team, and they, they think that they can just deliver it uh, based on their expertise on, on accounting. But the, the grants are focused on, uh, for example, project management. So you're, as an accountant, you can be a project manager as well. So you need to have the experiences in your team to be able to prove that your team can deliver this project. Uh, remain flexible. Don't just focus on one area or one niche. If you're focusing on homelessness, you can actually get grants on, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, I would say like some organization of, they provide, for example, materials, food. Uh, so you can be flexible on that because you are actually an organization that helps in not-for-profit uh, like um, homelessness, then you can get um, uh, uh, some funding for uh, supplying food, for supplying materials. So you have to be flexible on, on what, you, what, you, what you do exactly. The other thing is, don't present your organizations as a separate organization from the purpose of the founder because you need to show them you are actually helping them being part of what they do and you are a partner of what the purpose of that organization is. So don't show you are separate, you're just doing homelessness and you're completely not helping them of their organization. So you need to show them you're actually assisting them as an organization by doing XYZ project and because of your organization focus on this area, you're actually partner, partner with them on their purpose as well. Relationship and networking, as I said, relationship, it will open lots of opportunities for you. You need to be always um, helpful, friendly, being part of events, show, show that you're actually uh, helping. And uh, if you're not showing that you're helping, you can't, get anything out of uh, any, any grants really. Um, make a proper script of information that you actually uh, can provide as an organization. Show them what you do. Um, don't, don't just promise, but keep your promises on ground and just, you know, because that reflects on the organization as well. Um, you can't just apply, when I talk about relationships and networking, you can't just apply for an organization in somewhere in the US, for example, and they've never heard about your organization. They've never heard about what you do. And without attending any events they do, because some foundations, they do events to present what they do as a foundation. Uh, so you need to be part of it to show them what you do so they can understand, uh, they can trust on your organization. Remember to follow up always about what's what's coming from them as a grant uh, provider um, also as i said the, the knowing your purpose that will uh, reflect on 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 your audience you need to have clear understanding of who, who you're going to be talking with if you're a homelessness organization or if you're a business you are you need to understand what your business provides so you can understand who your audience are um, do not show you are trying to cut corners because that reflects on your documentation as well. So if you are trying to, uh, for example, the grant is for 10,000 10, and you can deliver a project for 100 million, you can't show that because it's not going to happen. You're not going to 
you're not going to be able to deliver a project for 100, 100 million with just 10,000 grants. So don't show your acclaim corners. Uh, engage with people uh, that we, they have a similar story of success in the past that will help you as well to be part of part of new um, 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 to be successful in your in your um, grant. Um, always when you write a grant, be in the position of the re reader, uh, not just someone as a business owner, because that reflects on 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 the document. Um, be in the position of the reader, not as a business owner, because that will show you're not trying to get the money out of the grant, you're actually delivering something, you're delivering the service and, and the project. Uh, as I said, reduce the risk from resources, you need to understand their skills, you need to uh, have a clear measure of, of their skills. You need to uh, be part of uh, uh, a service that, for example, some items you need to outsource it. So for example, um, Anne Marie does a virtual uh, service uh, system. So, and you you know she's an expert in that, then you have to outsource that that resource. Uh, you know X Y Z he does a, a specific service. You can outsource that, but make sure to have enough resources to support your business, um, not just. Um, as I said, applying for grants for the purpose of applying for grants, just to feel confident that you, you did your part and that's it as the business. Make a strategy and objectives and, and plan for it rather than just applying for it. Uh, oops. Then uh, also, what, what you need to apply for any program is you need to understand whether you are a sole trader as a business, whether you are actually a, what type of sector, what type of industry. Um, you, you, you need to have all this information based on your business profile or based on your uh, um, business plan to be able to submit to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the grant. So this is one of the requirements I had in, in, in one of the, one of the uh, grants application. Um, the insurances that you have in your business, it needs to be very clear of how much is your business um, uh, is all about. So you need to understand that as part of your, uh, your um, business. Um, you need to know uh, the business model you are working on, the structure of it. They need to know all of that as a grant uh, provider. They need to um, understand your, uh, uh, your, uh, your business plan. Uh, the industry you're working on. So all of those information, it's, it's part of, it's number one you need to provide as a grant uh, writer. And always outsource, as I mentioned, your um, the resources that you can't deliver, the, the expertise. Um, so some people are really expert in their field and you're not expert in everything. You, no one is, can be expert in everything. So that's something that you guys need to be aware of and any business needs to be aware of. So you can outsource your, um, your um, sort of resources. And that's it for me. Any questions, any inquiries? Beautiful. Look, I, 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 it's, a, it's a quick one, right? So I, I look at that and, and basically, it's just about making sure you dot the I's and cross the T's, isn't it? Exactly, exactly, Jason. It's, um, as I said, it's it's not about just applying for grants and, and be happy that you've done your part. Um, it's it, it you need to focus on what you do as a business. Yeah. Um, you need to know your purpose. You need to know. You need to plan it properly rather than just applying. Right. And now you you were talking about as well. Sorry, somebody else might have had a question. Do you want to just stop sharing for a sec, Zach? Sure. To see everybody. Um, you talked about, you know, tenders and, and grants and everything that will be there for five, 10 years, whatever. Um, so, so do you, as, as somebody that, that lives in this space, do you actually have, uh, like a, a calendar that you can share with people that they can fill in what grants are coming up? So remember you showed that slide? Yes. Yeah. Do you have, this is just Jason, the salesman and marketer kicking in here. Do you have 
something that people could do as a free download? I can. I can send you something like that uh, straight away to use. Uh, yeah, I do have it as a as a as a as a calendar kind of um, um, uh, in my in my desk, and I can check which ones are available, which ones would be suitable, and I can I can um, I can send you I can send it to everyone for free a uh, a calendar. Mate, shoot it through to me, and I'll I'll just make sure it goes out to the entire network, mate. I I, I think that's to. that's a great plan because you know something the the way that it looked on the on the the, the presentation, I went wow, that's a bloody good idea because there's all this stuff. I've only just start since I've met you. That's when I've started dipping in and seeing. Oh my God, there's all this stuff. But I wasn't aware that yeah, they, it'll be here next year and the year after. But then it will stop and and if, so to be able to uh, set a calendar of okay, so I know that over the next twelve months I can apply for this at this stage and this is this stage. So I can then pre-book and go. So I need to start working on this now, as opposed to oh my god, I've got to get it in in three days uh, because I think this is an integral integral part of any business. We we all provide a service to somebody, so there's going to be some form of grant out there somewhere. Exactly, exactly. It's it, it's all about planning and know what you want to do because some, especially um, some areas that we uh, we see, lots of grants are coming through to uh, specific businesses, and they usually come in regularly in in a specific time or a specific period. So. We need to plan it. We need to know when we yeah. want it. We need to know how big it is. Because as I said, if a startup business, you can't deliver five million worth of project in one year, as in the first year specifically, unless they're super, they have you know specific amount of resources to deliver it. So they need to be more realistic of what they want and deliver it based on that and plan it. Yeah, you have to build up, you have to build up your business, not just jump into the top. <laughs> Beautiful. Anybody else got any questions for Zach? Yeah, I was going to say when you put that together, have that advertise that, put it on your website where people can put their details in and download it. And the reason they put their details in is that you can give them a, you know, a week or so and then follow them up and ask them which ones in particular they were looking at. Because most people are going to look at it and go, well, yeah, this all sounds interesting, but they still don't know what they don't know. If you have a chat with them and say, okay, which one are you looking at? Tell us a bit about your business. And you can then guide them to which area they should be looking at. And then you can talk about what they need to put into that, which then leads you into them coming in one of your clients. Exactly. So what I'm going to have in my website, there's a membership hub. So that's where people can log in and, and have a, a login details as, as if they're logging to their own website and they'll see which grants are available that suits them. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I'm building that still with the, the builder. So yeah. it just going to so take a lot of time. So that's not built yet. That's not, not yeah. something we can sit in the chat room and everybody can check. Yeah. We so that's something to work towards. And then when you've got it up, make sure that you follow people up when they do come into your system. Otherwise, wasted opportunity. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's a perfect thing to be sending out to people because, because you're right. I think, I think a lot of people go, oh, it's free money. Uh, it's, it's not. And I look at it and I go, if I was going to try and work for a twenty thousand dollar contract with a client, how much work would I put in to do that? And I think you have to be prepared to put that much work into the tender to get the tender. Exactly. And how many resources? How many people we're going to be working on? How many virtual assistant? How many project managers? How many? You need to plan it. You need to estimate how much it's going to cost you without just applying. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Any other questions? Yep. Thanks. Wasim? Oh, there's oh. Amarie then. Oh. Somebody else? You okay. go, Wasim. Oh, thanks, Anne. Uh, thanks, Anne-Marie. Zach, amazing presentation, brother. Just a quick question. Is there a is there somewhere that you know for businesses who are looking to maybe look at tenders? Is there somewhere that we can go and search for tenders for our industry and things like that? Like, yeah. Look, at, for tenders, there's heaps of tenders website that they provide the service. However, it, it depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for government tenders? Are you looking for uh, private uh, tenders? It depends on your industry as well. So, for example, tradies, they can look at uh, Estimate One. There's Estimate One software that provides them with notifications when there is a, a uh, tender available. 
uh, some they go to uh, Australian tenders and just search on it. So there's lots of resources uh, to, to see and to figure it out where it's developed. There's panels, government panels, if you're a business that would like to be part of a uh, government panel. And I can assist you with that as well if you want to know more details about it. Yeah, we'll have a chat because obviously with our industry, there's a lot of new things happening, you know. Like I get, <laughs> I called ASIC the other day trying to get some information and they've pulled down all their crypto information or they're all gone on their website. So there's a lot of things happening. Like we, I just want to know where we can keep an eye on what's going on to see if there is something that we might be able to pick up. Because you know? I definitely agree with everything you said. It's not just picking anything up and going for it. We want to find something that we can actually do. Exactly. And, and uh, I always uh, tell people if it's something going to work for them or not. Um, just upfront before I, you know, it's not about just getting their money and, and apply for something that's not, not going to be successful. I uh, always be careful about my reputation. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And Marie? I was just going to say that in the case of someone like Jason, who hasn't done a tender or a grant application before, would the first time be the amount of time that Jason was referring to where you would have to put equal amounts of time and energy into that first time? And then from then on, it may you may have somewhat of a template for different organizations to be able to populate therefore not being able to not having to put as much effort into subsequent applications yeah that's a good question so the, the main structure would be the same if you're doing the first uh, like obviously the first application will be a bit longer time to build the structure especially if you don't have a business plan if you don't have much information that i need to build it up for you uh, however each tender has a different requirement. Each grant has a separate requirements and I need to follow that those requirements. Mm -hmm. So that's what I keep telling my, my clients. It's not about just sending a, a, a document about your business. It's about answering the questions that they ask for. Not all the grants are asking for the same question. Not all the tenders are asking the same questions, but you need to be flexible of what they're asking for and you need to show how you can provide those services they're asking for. Beautiful. Thank you. Anybody else? Fantastic. All right, let's stop the button.